All right, we're going to play a game that I like to call linear, quadratic, or exponential. <laughs> but uh, really, all we're going to be looking at is uh, three different tables. And you've probably seen questions like this where it says, given this table, tell us if it's linear, if it's quadratic, or if it's exponential. Okay. And it could seem daunting. You get all these numbers and you know key value, these all these X, Y value. Like, what do I do with that? <laughs> but there's a set... Um, there's a good set process behind how we do this. Luckily, otherwise we'd be out of luck, right? <laughs> but uh, let's look at this first one. And what I like to do personally, what I like to teach is first looking to see if it's linear. If it's linear, it's going to be a constant change with the same corresponding change in, um, in X. Okay, so what I mean by that is, let's see if there's the same change in Y for the same change in X. So here we're changing by one. So one to two, we get a change in one. Here we get a change in four. So if this was linear, if I go another one, right, then it's to be another four. But that's not the case here, right? We get a change in eight. So we can automatically cross off linear. Now let's see if it's quadratic. So we already know, let's go back and get rid of that four. What's the change that's actually happening here? We have a change in eight, right? What about down here? We have another change in one and then another change in one. But here we have a change in 16 and a change in 32. So obviously this is not linear. Now we're going to look at the change in change. So I'm actually, I wanna put a little extra table uh, column here and put, this is delta y. This is the change in y. And that was a horrible y. Let's try that again. <laughs> change in y, okay? So now we're going to look at the change in the change, okay? AKA the change of our change in y and see what that's doing. So from here to here, from four to eight, what are we doing? We're increasing by four. From here to here, we're increasing by eight, and from here to here, we're increasing by 16. Now you can kind of see this uh, this little pattern right here. If you're not seeing, what are we doing from here? We're not adding the same amount each time. We're multiplying. To go from four to eight to 16, I'm doing times two. Again, I'm doing times two. So do you see that, that pattern right there? And if we were to keep going down here, if I put another six, and then uh, what would it be? 128, if we kept going, it would be a change in 64. And to go from 32 to 64, it'd be a, a times two again. And I'm saying a whole bunch of stuff without writing it, and I apologize. But basically, to figure out if an equation is quadratic or exponential, we look at the change in the change, okay? Given a, a table of values like this, what's the change in the change? So I should have put a little thing right there. So change in um, delta Y. I think change in delta Y sounds a lot better than the change in the change. It just sounds ridiculous, right? But um, that's the main idea. So if you look at the change of, of Y and you get these these values right here in this first column or this uh, this column right here, and then you look at the change in that delta Y and you start to get uh, a change that's the same, we're multiplying as we go down, right? Then that means it's going to be a, um, a exponential. And you can see from right here, if I go from four to eight, I multiply by two to go from eight to 16 times two and so on and so forth. So it's going to be times two, times two, times two. That's consistent with an exponential function, right? That's not quadratic. That's not linear. Every time we're multiplying by the same ratio. Okay. In this case, the ratio would be a two. Well, we're not going to go into how do we actually write these equations. We're going to save that for a separate video, <laughs> which is going to be so much fun. It's not really bad once you get the idea behind it. Okay. So that's the first one. We're gonna do the same idea for this next one. Let's see what we get. So what's our change in X? We get one, our change in Y is three. So we wanna see, well, what is that? That change in Y over the change in X, that ratio is three over one. Let's see what we have here. 13 minus four, we get a nine. Five minus two, we get a three. So it's tempting to throw this away and say, well, you know, it's not linear. We have a different change in Y. It's not consistent. It's not the same. But remember, that has that only holds true if it, the change in X is the same. But here, we're increasing by three, so it's different. Let's check this ratio out of Y to X. We get nine over three, which is equal to three over one. Look at that. Okay, so let's keep going. So with the 13 to 19, we have a six. Five to seven, we have a two. Let's get the ratio of y to uh, of y to x again. Oh, look at that! We get a six over two. That's consistent with the other ones. And just to make sure, we always look at all the combinations um, of con of consecutive pairs. And from nineteen to forty three, what do we get? We get a twenty four. And from seven to fifteen, we get an eight. And look at that! I'm going to extend these three down here and say that that's equal to twenty four over eight. So these are all the same. This would be a linear equation because the ratio of the y to x is, it's a consistent change, right? And the change is three. So if we were writing this equation, the uh, slope 
would be three. And again, we'll save how we write these equations for a, different, a separate video, even separate from the first one. So we'll probably have three different videos on how we actually write the equations. Um, but again, those aren't bad. Um, once we get the idea of how we, how we can um, determine whether they're linear, quadratic, or exponential, that feels like the majority of the work. Everything else is just kind of plug and chug kind of, kind of stuff. So for this last one, let's see what we have. I know I said we have linear, quadratic, or exponential. We left one of those off, so it could be the third. Who knows? Let's check it out. <laughs> so what do we have? For this one, we have a uh, change in y of 3 and then a change in x of 1. Same thing for here. We have it. Well, not the same thing, but let's do the same thing right there. That's what I meant to say. The change in y would be a 5. Change in x is 1. So right away we can say, okay, well, the first one was a change in three. The second was a change in five and we're still, we're changing the same amount. We're going up by the same amount in X. So this is not linear. This is not a constant increase or decrease if it was a subtraction. So with that out of the way, we can kind of cross this linear off up here for this last one. And we get a seven and a one again. And this last one's still a one. And then this right here, we get a nine. So now let's do the same thing. Let's look at the change in the change. So if you notice for the linear, we really didn't have to do that. We didn't need the change in the change because we knew that it was a consistent uh, change. I keep saying change so much and I'm sorry about that. It was a consistent difference that we were doing, okay? A consistent amount that it was increasing or decreasing. Now with this, we have to look at the change in the change of y. So much change. Change in, uh, sorry, I meant to say change in the, yeah, change in the change of y. That's why I like to say change in delta y. It's a little bit less globby. I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> but, uh, so what we have here is as we go from in between three to five, that's a change in two, five to seven, change in two, seven to nine, change in two. So we have a consistent amount that we're increasing each time, five, three to five to seven to nine, right? So we're adding the same amount in the change of Y. So we're adding two each time to the change of Y. When that happens, uh, that means that this is a quadratic. That's the idea behind a quadratic, uh, in, for the reasoning behind this, I'll make a separate video on as to why that is. But for our purposes, when we look at the change in the change of y, it's, it's, if it's a consistent number that we're adding every time, then it's a quadratic equation. Okay, If it's a consistent change in the change of y, it's a quadratic. So that's how we figure out if it's quadratic. If it's linear, though, I feel like those are the easiest of all of them. We, we want to figure out if the change in y over the change in x is the same, the same ratio. We may get different fractions that look different, but if we simplify them, it's all the same ratio, which is our slope, okay? And we have to do it for every single pair. Don't, don't um, uh, not leave, you don't leave off the last one just because it's looking like linear because that last one could be the, the kicker. You know, they try and trick you up and, and it happens a lot. It's very easy. It's very tempting to do when your mind is tired <laughs> with all these numbers. And then for the exponential, when we look at the change in the change of y, are we multiplying by the same amount each time? And then we'll know that's an exponential function. Okay. And the, um, the idea behind these, uh, of why there it's a separate video that we'll need for that. I just wanted to show you the, what, how we do it, what we do for these. Okay. And that's a really important, uh, reasoning, um, a really important idea of what we're doing, especially for all these questions that you're going to have and you're going to see, you need to know how we do it um, and what we do. The why is important, but it's a separate video, okay? So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, this is Justin with Top Tier Math. Mm -hmm.